What's up, everybody? It is your boy, the Big Ox Uchiha, and uh, this video is to really kind of engage with you. If you see me look over, that's because I'm trying to uh, remind myself of my notes and my timing and everything. So uh, please do bear with me. But uh, the purpose of this video is to talk with you about uh, this subject of how do I uh, start a career in information technology or IT. Okay, um, this video is going to be a little lengthy because of the fact that I want to make sure that I cover as many bases as possible. Um, I don't want to um, make this too heavy, but I want to kind of like make this where anyone can kind of come into this video and watch it and get a good and clear understanding of how you not only get hired in IT, but how you thrive in IT. Because the thing is, it's not a question of how you get hired, it's uh, a question of where you get hired, okay, and when, okay. Now, let me start by saying what information technology is and what IT is. Now, IT is kind of an umbrella. Um, Thing in the field okay what some people would consider IT may not actually be IT um, some things are really kind of like inbound sales or inbound customer service roles it really kind of depends on your office um, IT is legitimately anything that's kind of dealing with the day-to-day -day operations of from a technical standpoint of a um, office somehow some way our job is to manage all of the infrastructure uh, from a technical perspective that means if something should go down uh, the IT is supposed to be there as a person on site or remotely to fix whatever issues that is coming up be it the password needs to be re reinstalled or um, anything so there are different layers to IT I have to say that um, there's different sides to what people would consider IT. Uh, there is the more uh, scientific side where you're dealing with more of a uh, programming, coding, and stuff like that, where you're architect and you're doing stuff like that. Um, there are the uh, side where you're more of a customer service, customer service role where it's like desktop support, desk side support, uh, help desk, stuff like that. You will be looking at a more of a, uh, a in-house IT stuff like that, uh, more break fix. That is really more one side. So really it just kind of comes down to two sides. Are you programming and coding or are you uh, doing more so of the um, the, the break fix issues okay uh, if you're more on the break fix side now don't get it twisted there's some coding that may need to happen but uh, it's very very minimal compared to um, because some offices and that's another thing we have to talk about is uh, where you're applying to so I'm gonna put this on my list where are you going okay so everything kind of comes back to uh, those two things is a break fix or is it um, programming or coding, however you want to say it. Um, now, um, before I get too in-depth with, you know, companies and stuff like that, I want to make sure that I say that, again, this is very subjective uh, because every office runs differently. Um, there is still a uniform way of, of working. Uh, but that's based upon what you're trying to do. Uh, office sizes and capacity uh, does play a role, okay? So the first thing I want to talk to do is what do I need to do to be in IT, okay? So what qualifies you to be in IT? And again, that's very subjective to the office to which you're applying, okay? Some companies, not all, some um, require a four-year degree okay and you can't get around it they want you to have some type of information systems technology 
Yeah, something to that degree. Now, I personally would tell you, I would not jump into this field if you have not done any education at all. Um, me personally, I started at a young age, um, kind of starting to understand how computers work, uh, how they function. I had a, I had an affinity for um, just doing I uh, some break fix issues. That's always been my thing, even as a kid. Um, I was always very uh, inquisitive, always trying to find the problem, always trying to figure out why the issue was going on and trying to come up with a solution to uh, fix the issue. Those were my steps always, even as a kid. So um, I went to Jane Allen's Business Career Center here in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and I graduated and I graduated from high school with a diploma, but I also attended what was called at the time computer repair. So when I graduated, I graduated with a with a, spe a specification on my degree on my uh, diploma saying that I had uh, completed all of the necessary courses for computer repair. So I had a trade coming out of high school. So that kind of prepared me in a sense to go into an into the field and start working uh that didn't happen right away to be honest i actually had uh kind of floated in the ether for a minute you know uh i started doing kind of like personal work and stuff and working in my own business uh you know fixing computers on the side making a little money chump change compared to what bigger people are making but i still went out and tried to make it happen and i did i did okay um but that being said, years later, you know, I started to uh, get opportunities to do so. And I wonder, how did you get on the floor of a company in the IT doing, you know, troubleshooting and all of that good stuff? So um, I had the qualifications there, but I didn't have any certifications. So I would say to you, if you're trying to just get into IT, first, you need to know what you're doing. And the only way that you can do that is by educating yourself one way, shape, form, or fashion. Two, you need to have um, some idea of which part of IT you want to be in. Again, if you're coding or if you're having more of an affinity for troubleshooting and, and, and break fix issues, you need to know the difference between the two and you need to know how those things function. Okay, so education is key, but it does not mean that you have to specifically have a degree in order to be successful in information technology. It literally depends on on the office to which you're applying to okay so education is a is a part of it but not a hundred percent of everything um, the next question is do you want to uh, be in do you have customer service experience a lot of people who want to go let's just go down my side of things the help desk uh, desk side support desktop support and all of those things uh, those are very um, customer driven roles so it's good to have an idea of how customer service works um, you should have some customer service background uh, particularly on the phones uh, I would always tell people you should have some inbound call center experience not cold calling inbound call center experience without that you won't know how to really manage your calls manage your time know what SLA is know what a Q&A is there are things that are um, very important to know when you're in IT and how and working at a help desk you need to know how to be able to function on the phone have experience sitting down for long periods of time being stationary in one place uh, if you don't have a don't like that then you really would not like like really 90 percent of it because a lot of the job is stationary uh, you're not getting up you're, you're not going all over the world you don't have a chance to uh, you're really kind of sitting there getting the job done uh, fixing issues for people and uh, coming up with remedies so people can get back to work, you know. Um, so that is a huge part of it. And I know I'm rambling a little bit, but and I know I kind of went off topic, but it's very important that you know, once again, 
what qualifies you. The one thing that qualifies you is, like I said, education. The next thing is understanding, you know, experience, job experience. What have you brought to the table? If you don't have a lot of tech experience, but you have a lot of customer service experience, I would suggest going down the help desk route. Getting like a help desk level one position, starting off on the ground floor in that customer service type role, meeting the need of the customer, getting an idea of how you troubleshoot issues um and you know getting that information taking that knowledge and applying it more and more will give you the ability to know how to really uh do what it is that we do on a constant basis um for me i worked at a bank for a while and i had some really good leaders who taught me how to think in a different way uh really of a what, what, where type where, what is the issue? Why are we having it? And what do we do to go? Uh, where is it happening at? You know, is it somewhere that I can grab onto or is this somewhere uh, clear across the country? And uh, in what part of the uh, system is it uh, a bank teller? Is it a, you know, um, is it back in? Is it, you know, all of these different things. And you have to be able to answer those questions and come up with a reasonable thing and come up with a solution as fast as possible. Try to think on the fly. Try to be first customer resolution. Uh, you know, trying to do those things. Um, so, um, again, it comes back to now, where are you going? Are you going to the help desk or are you going to go on the programming side? Now, I can't tell you anything about the programming side because I've never been a programmer. Um, so that I can't tell you, but I'm going to tell you this. One of the big misconceptions about it is that we make a lot of money. That is not always the case. Um, you got to know which way you're going, you know, uh, are you going into a programming side of things? You might make a little bit more money doing that. Um, but if you're trying to start off on the ground floor, you're not going to make a lot of money. Okay. in desktop support, there's not a lot of money. Um, let's be real. Let's not sit here in a uh, desktop support, desk side support. You can make a, a good wage. You know, you can make a livable wage. Um, but is it is it making a hundred thousand dollars a year? No, you're not going to make a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, in most desk side support roles, in most desktop support roles, in most help desk roles. Those are not your your you know. Uh, $80,000 job, you know, you can read on um, LinkedIn and all these different places, Glassdoor, Glassdoor and all of these different places that's going to tell you the salary is 60000 starting. No, the average person makes about 45000 if they're lucky. OK, um, another thing that you have to be uh, aware of is that in IT, um, you're going to basically there is a shelf life for every office. Uh, for that IT group. Uh, sometimes you may come into a place and you could work there for 10, 15 years. Uh, and that is very uh, seldom, to be honest. Most times you're going to come into IT and it's going to be a five to 10 year window, five years. Um, most IT offices now are co on a consultant basis. So it's not really on a, it's on a contract. You're a consultant for some third party entity you're not uh being they're not hiring uh full on contractors for to work in uh directly for the customer you know uh very few are out there i'm not saying that direct hires don't happen uh but you to be directly hired with the company nowadays is very few and, few and far in between a lot of places have have gone towards the uh third party route let some other company like a, a robber half or a, a pomeroy or a um anyone like that they let company compucom that's another one uh excel you know those type of companies red knight solution uh they give them the okay to go in and do the management of their IT. So they don't have to sit there. A, co a company doesn't have to worry about uh, having the the medical on the books for this person or having the, the, the money for uh, paying the person. They'll get a big lump sum of like, uh, let's say two, like, like 25 million or a million dollars. And they say, okay, well, if it's, well, you, Mr. IT person, you're going to get, um, 
thirty thousand of this money. And technically, they got millions, but on, you're only getting about thirty thousand. Okay, um, but that's because that's what your role uh, mandates. And every person that they do, they're saying basically, we're going to invest thirty thousand, we're going to invest forty five thousand, we're going to invest fifty thousand, whatever the amount that they're saying that they're going to contract you to do the job. That's the amount that they're contracting you to do. Okay, so the contractor is not you. You are not the contractor. They are the contractor. Okay, you are uh, the employee of whatever said company that you are applying to. Okay, which means now that company has to continue to meet. Uh, the needs of the main customer. Now, if those meet needs aren't met, uh, the person who basically gets uh, put into um, any type of trouble would be that company that you work for. So if you work for like a Robert Half, uh, Robert Half would be the one who owns the contract. So Robert Half is, is basically taking the heat for any problems that you create. Um, when that happens, uh, if they don't miss, meet their SLAs, basically they get charged a hefty fee, sometimes like astronomically, and they're not making any money if they're doing that. OK, so if you don't meet your SLA, so let's say uh, your SLA is four hours uh, for a uh, a CEO to get fixed. OK, and you don't fix them in four hours, they could get charged for that. You know, and so basically that doesn't come out your pay, hopefully. Uh, but what it could do is mess up that company from being able to continue to be providing that service, which could ultimately stop you from having a job. Most contracts go between you and whatever company you're with for however long that they contracted you for, sometimes six months, sometimes a year, sometimes they're indefinite, but they still have a shelf life, okay? So it just really depends as long as that company is there and they allow for you to continue to grow with them, you can continue to um, work with whomever that IT is uh, the IT group is and you can continue to uh, uh, make money uh, a lot of times what you get paid is what you get paid a lot of places do not do raises because obviously they are contracted for a certain amount and they don't want to pay you anymore because if they do guess what's going to end up happening they're going to be they're not going to make any money on the back it's a money game it's, it's always a money game um, but you uh, have to negotiate your contract in the beginning. Um, it's not an easy thing to do because, of course, you want a job. They're saying they only hire for this amount. Uh, it's nothing wrong with trying to ask questions to find out how much uh, you do. You want to look at the experiences that you have. You want to look at your resume. Is it something that you should be walking into uh, with with your head held high saying, hey, you know what? I do this job. I've been doing this for X amount of years. I know what I'm doing. I know what I bring to the table. I know the experience. You don't even have to train me often. You, I get hit the ground running, and you should be paying me X, Y, Z amount of dollars. Well, if that company cannot handle X, Y, Z amount of dollars, or they only have you contracted for a specific amount, and they can't go above that because that kills off their budget, well, guess what? You you need to know that and understand that and go on about your business um, and go find somewhere else to uh, work. Um, you need to know what the SLA of that company is. Uh, what is How long does it take for a problem to get triaged? And, and what happens if, you know, you guys breached the SLA. Well, who who is held accountable for that? You know, and how much is they held accountable for? You need to know that. Um, you need to know. Um, I mean, you have to come in with the idea that you need to ask as many questions as humanly possible to get the answers that you need. So that way, when you uh, sign your name on that dotted line, you have all of the things you need to take care of your family. Because at the end of the day, it is not about it's a contract and contracts are something that can, you know, be, can be, you know, it can't be changed once you, once you do it, once you, do, once you sign there, that's what you agree to. And once you agree to it, uh, they don't, re they really do not have to do anything to uh, make sure you make more money. Should they, it would be nice, but do they have to? No, because you already made the agreement. So if you don't like it, go somewhere else. You know, it's a sad truth, but it's the truth nonetheless. Um, 
let's see. So we talked about um, experience. We talked about you know what you should do in an interview. We should we talked about uh, what you need, uh, what qualifications you need, and all that good stuff. So I want to just say in the end, just make sure that when you're applying for IT. That you make it a, you know, you go into those interviews, you have a fun experience. Don't try to go in acting like you know everything. Uh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to uh, talk about every inch of your life. Uh, just show what you can do. Uh, be the, you're the best you can be. Be open-minded. Uh, IT is a changing field every day. Um, there's no such thing as uh, the same thing you did today as you will tomorrow. Just go into the interview and just be. Uh, you know, the best way to knock out the interview is to be yourself, um, you know, because anything else, be the, tell the truth, you know, don't lie. Um, and the reason why I say tell the truth and don't lie, and I tell you to live the truth, is because if you try to be more than what you say you are, what you say is what they're going to test you by. You know, that's that's the standard to which you held up, you know. So if you are not good at ownership, be honest. I'm not the best at ownership. I just started getting into that. Um, if you're not, if you have trouble with, uh, you know, if you don't understand PowerShell, uh, or if you don't understand JavaScript, or if you don't understand, you know, uh, something, be mad enough to say, I don't know this part yet. And if that's something that they're looking for, you need to know that because if it's if it's something that they're looking for that you can't specifically do. But you're willing to learn it. You may be able to get in to learn. But if they're not ready to, to – they need somebody to get in and just get it done, uh, you need to know that so that way you're not overwhelmed when you walk to the door because nothing is worse than uh, they say start working and you don't even know how to even uh, – you know, oh, you can't even find PowerShell, let alone open it properly. You know, if they're looking for you to, to program something and you have no program background – you need to be honest about that. You know, if you have never been a manager before, you need to be honest about that. Um, if you've had internships, but you're, you've never been uh, be above a certain level, then you need to be honest about that. If you're looking to be on a different level and you have experience working on that level, then you need to reflect that in your, um, in your, in your resume and then also show what you have done. Show your math because if you don't, what's going to end up happening is you are going to feel overwhelmed you're going to come in there and you're going to just feel like man what the heck did i sign up for because you're like man i really just need to uh find something that a little bit more uh you know thing but you're now your head is above water you know i mean below water and you're ready to like you know you're ready to drown because you you didn't know what you're doing in the first place so it's good to be honest it's good to be honest with yourself okay and just be ready to try new things. Um, be open to learning. Because just because the office that you left uh, did it one way, the office that you're going to may not do it that way at all. Uh, just because the password policy is 30 days in one area, maybe 90 days in another. It may, be, may not even have a password change. So you need to know that. There are some places that it's every 30 days. Every 30 days you must change your password. If you're if you're in that environment, you need to be able to uh, listen to that. And honestly, you just need to be able to know that there is a change coming in every area. Some places they need you to uh, do be an everything, man, even though it says, you know, they only need you to restart passwords, maybe troubleshoot machines, set up PCs. But they don't tell you is that like, OK, there's another 150 P or Ooh, even better. They may say that, you know, you're signing up for an office of 300 people. Okay. But they didn't tell you about another 300 that's coming behind them. Okay. So now you got all these computers that need to be finished within days or within weeks. You need to be able to jump into there and get it done. They're not looking for, to train you. You see what I'm saying? They want you to have a working knowledge that will allow you to get on the floor and get the things done. Okay. So, I'm just saying, like, this is the most – these are the really big things. So you just never know which way is going to – the cookie's going to crumble for you. So it's good to have working knowledge. It's good to be able to think on the fly. It's good to be a self-starter because in most IT positions, no one's going to tell you to start. 
they're not going to hold your hand. They're not going to coddle you. They're not going to ask you, is everything okay? Okay, they're going to tell you, <laughs> you know, get to work. And that's all. The, and they're going to say, okay, do you know how to do this? Go over here and fix these PCs. I need them fixed today. They're not training you. They're not giving you information. Um, is uh, What is the company like? Why is it being absorbed or if, is it being absorbed? Is there any uh, reason why uh, the last IT person left? You need to ask these type of questions. You need to have an idea of the office that you're going in. Where are you going? Why are you trying to get there? Who's there? Why are they there? You know, how long has that management been there? Uh, is this a new company? You know, how small of a company is it? How big of a company is it? Uh, what is there? Do they have any growth company? If you want to be able to go to different levels uh, in IT or if you just want to, uh, because a lot of times, a lot of offices, there is no glass ceiling for you to shatter. Okay, like there is no management team uh, that you have to go past. The one that you're looking at it's the one that it is. Okay, that's a huge thing. The huge mistake that a lot of people do when they go into IT and they go into these fields and they go into these offices and they have this idea that they're going to uh, continue to interview for the job while they're working. They, they think that they're going to go into this uh, office and they're going to make this huge impact and that they're going to get this big company raise and they're going to go into management. And I'm here to tell you that you need to know the office size first. Be realistic. If, if if all of the supervisors you see in front of you are right there in the interview, they're not and they're not talking about leaving, then it would be very, very important that you do not come in thinking that you're going to be uh, pushed to management level. Do you see what I'm saying? They're not going to just push you up and elevate you. You may have to leave that company altogether and go to another company to get into that type of position. OK, but the best way to do it is to is to be very, very approachable by the people in the IT office to which you are already in being very open and doing a good job, showing that you can be in management, that you can be in some type of leadership role. Never assume that just because you are in, you know, this place that they're going to elevate you just because you are good. That's not a that's not even realistic. Make sure you realize that when you walk through that door, when they hire you for whatever position they're hiring you for, that is what they're hiring you for. Nothing more, nothing less. OK, they're not hiring you to be a manager. If they needed you to be a manager, they would have hired you for a manager. They are needing you in the role that you're playing. Play your role. Play it great. And if they if they see it. They'll, they'll lift you. And if they elevate you, then take it. But don't just walk in thinking that you're going to shatter the glass ceiling because the glass ceiling, there may not be one to shatter. There may be just that person and that's it. You know, and you got to know how their IT management works. Does their IT management allow for you to go to a different place and do that? It, you know, just, just find out these things. Don't walk in just thinking that you're the business. Be humble as you can. You know, I, I don't care what other like IT guys say. You got to come in there, know what you're talking about, but be humble, man. Uh, you know, there's people who know more than you do, you know, and they've been knowing that infrastructure back ways forward, front ways forward, and they're not scared to answer any questions that they want to answer. So that's all I got to say for you today. I know this video is 30 minutes long. I'm sorry. But um, this is something that was uh, asked to me. So I wanted to give as much of an in-depth conversation as I could. I know I went off topic a couple of times and I kind of flipped around a, co a couple of times. But uh, I hope that this video is in some ways informative to, to you and that it helps you in some type of ways. Um, I'm your boy, The Big Guy Suchia. Please comment, rate, subscribe. And thank you for coming down to my channel. Uh, if you can watch other videos uh, that are in the boxes here, 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 and here. Okay? Thank you and peace.